what's up you guys it's your girl JD here with my life as Kikai in today's video I'm going to be doing a makeup tutorial creating this look for you using the Morphe times Jaclyn Hill vault collection specifically her palette in bling boss I'm sure that you all have seen this vault collection out on YouTube so I'm not going to go too in-depth into the swatches or the formula or any of that sort of thing. If you want to see this full swatch video of all four palettes in this collection, I will link Jaclyn Hill's video in the description box down below so you can go check it out and see the in-depth review on these eyeshadow palettes. And if you want further insights into anything surrounding these palettes, just do a YouTube search. I'm sure there will be lots of videos that come up that will answer any questions that you have about this palette. I do have a few things to say before I get into this makeup tutorial. If you just want to see how I got this look, I'm going to leave a timestamp here for you to go and just click forward to where I start this makeup tutorial. So if you want to see how I got this look, just click forward. But before I start this video, I want to just give a little bit of a disclaimer. This video is only going to be focusing on the makeup tutorial. If you're wanting or expecting me to spill the tea or give some kind of shade to Morphe or Jaclyn Hill or come up with some sort of conspiracy theory as to why the palette launch was delayed, what company sued what company and who said what, then you've come to the wrong video. There are certainly enough gossip and drama channels out there for you to go check out if you wanted some juicy tidbits, but that's not what I'm about. I'm only going to be sharing my own personal thoughts and experience with this collection and specifically this palette that I'm going to be using today at a makeup tutorial. But before I get onto the makeup tutorial, I wanted to give a really quick little pep talk addressing the controversy regarding Laura Lee versus Jeffree Star. I almost feel like I'm going to attract a lot of hate by saying what I'm going to say. But honestly, someone has to speak up. Yesterday, I was watching the live stream that John Kukian had on his channel going live where it was a side-by-side -side comparison of Laura Lee's subscriber count going up and down. Well, more specifically, Jeffrey's subscriber count going up and Laura Lee's going down. And I just joined the live chat because I thought, oh, this would be a great place to connect with some other YouTubers, people who have passion about what I do, like, you know, beauty, makeup, glam, all that sort of thing. And I thought it would be a great place to connect and make some YouTube friends. And honestly, I could not have been more wrong. I quickly left that space feeling a little bit flat and, I don't know, a little bit discouraged because the comments on that live chat were so full of hate and negativity. It was like enough to make my heart ache. Look, I'm not in any way excusing or condoning any of the horrible tweets or things that were said, but neither am I saying that those things justify all the nasty and horrible things that people were saying on that live chat and I'm sure comments that are flooding videos and Instagram posts. It's just not okay to talk like that to anybody. At the end of the day, we're all human. No matter how much you earn, how many subscribers you have, how many views you've got, we're all on the same plane. We're all human. We're all human beings. Laura, Jeffree Star, Manny, Gabrielle, Nikki, you, me, we're all human beings. I mean, sure, they may have said and done some horrible things in the past, but if you really think about it, who hasn't? If you're honest with yourself, as I am, I mean, guys, I'm not just saying this to you, I'm saying this to me as well. We know that we've all done and said some horrible things in the past. It's just that you and I, we don't have public lives that are under the scrutiny of millions of followers. So I don't know if anyone's really gonna watch this or if it's gonna help anyone, but I personally just wanted to shine a little bit of light and a little bit of love into the darkness and the negativity that really seems to be blanketing and covering the beauty and glam world at the moment, it seems. I'm just saying, please show some love to each other. Think about what you're typing and what you're saying and ask yourself, would you really say this to someone's face? Other people's hypocrisy and fakeness is not your problem. It's not what is the issue here. Because at the end of the day, their life is theirs. Your life is yours. My life is mine. They really don't matter. You to yourself, me to myself, is what matters the most. Because at the end of the day, when all is said and done, all the people who are closest to you, all they're going to remember is how you impacted their lives. Whether it's positive or negative. That's what people are going to remember. So please, all I really want to say is just show some love to each other. There's already enough negativity and hate in this world without adding to it. 
Okay, so after all that heavy stuff, let's jump into something a little bit more fun like makeup and this eyeshadow look that I'm really gonna do for you today. So without further ado, let's get into this tutorial. excited to use these palettes guys. I'm going to be using Bling Boss in today's makeup tutorial. If you wanted to see makeup tutorials using the other three eyeshadow palettes then definitely give this video a thumbs up or comment down below which one you want to see because there are so many different eyeshadow looks that could be made with all of these. They're so pretty. It is so gorgeous. I absolutely love this purple shade. I'm gonna get straight into this makeup tutorial. So I've already primed my eyes. I'm going to go straight into the shade Hush Hush and use that as a transition shade. So straight off the bat, this shade Hush Hush is blending really nicely. I think the test for whether or not a shade is going to blend really nicely is to definitely use the matte ones first because matte ones are harder to build up because they don't have as much oils in them that make the shimmery shadows shimmery, if that makes any sense. So this one is building up very nicely. I'm just taking my time building up that transition shade before I add any other colors. I'm doing my eyes first for this look because I don't know how much fallout is going to be in these shadows. So if there is a fair bit, I can just clean it up and then do my foundation later on. So taking a smaller blending brush, I'm going to go into the shade Rockstar and apply that to the outer V of my eye, just to deepen it up a little bit. Okay, this is gorgeous. I haven't done a purple eyeshadow look in so long. So honestly, this is truly refreshing to be going into a little bit more color again. I'm going to take that shade up and into my crease just slightly, but not going too far up onto my eyelid. Okay, so I've come to a little bit of a problem here. I have no idea why the eyeshadow isn't sticking to that little patch there. I don't know if you can see. There's a little patch on my eyelid where no matter how much I blend, the eyeshadow is still appearing a little patchy there. It's really strange. I have a feeling it might just be me because it's applying really nicely to this side and yet to this side, it's not sticking so I don't know if it's just my eyelid being silly but there's something definitely going wrong here I'm just being completely 100% honest so this side is really nice this side not so much so I have a feeling there's something wrong with my skin on this side <laughs> I don't know if you can see there it's just rubbing off completely I have a feeling it's because my left eye tends to be a little bit more watery than my right eye especially when I'm wearing contacts so I have a feeling that because of that little bit of moisture that's seeping out from from my eye it's making the eyeshadow not stick so if you have watery eyes this might be an issue for you see there it's just it's just coming straight off it's blending out super nicely on this side of my eye though so I don't think it's the shadows well, I mean, it's the shadows that won't stick when there's even a little bit of moisture. So if you're planning on like watching an emotional movie or having um, 
tough conversation or something, I wouldn't advise going wearing this eyeshadow. <laughs> okay, so after blending for a bajillion years, I finally got the eyeshadow to sort of stay. It needs a little bit more blending there, I can see. But after my tears sort of dried up a little bit, it started to stick on a whole lot better. I'm allowing myself to be a little bit messy on the edges because I'm going to clean that up anyway with a face wipe before I do my foundation. I just want to deepen up that purple into the crease a fair bit. I'm just really trying to blow out that color onto my lid because I have very small lid space and a great bit of space between my eyebrow and where my crease is so I'm just trying to maximize that space and show as much color as I can. Okay, so that's as blended as I think I'm gonna get it. With a smaller blending brush, I'm going to go into the shade Mystic and just focus that right on the outer corner of my eye just to really deepen up this look. I am absolutely loving how this one is blending out. And you know how sometimes when you have three colors blended in, in almost the same spot, they almost just blend into each other and you can't see the shade that you put there anymore? Well, that's not happening with these. I can actually see the different colors that I've placed there. And that's amazing. I feel like whenever I do eyeshadow on this eye, it always turns out nicer than this side. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more of Rockstar and then place that just above the transition shade just so that we can see that color a little bit more. Okay, so I want to do a bit of a half cut crease look, so I'm going to take a bit of concealer and just cut the crease. have a little trick here for a cut crease guys depending on your eye shape I mean this not might work for all of you but whenever I want to cut the crease and want to know where up to where I need to bring my concealer what I do is apply a little bit of concealer down here on my lid look up a bit and then when I tilt my head back down I can see exactly where that concealer smudged so I'm just gonna follow my natural lid shape and then bring the concealer up where are my lids closed? Does that make sense? You could probably see what I'm doing better than I can explain it. <laughs> okay, so I think that's as even as I'm going to get it. Now comes the moment I have been waiting for. I'm going to go into the shade Gem. First off, I'm going to go in with a dry packing brush and just see how the shade applies. But if I need to wet the brush, then I will. Pick up some of that and apply that where I cut the crease. Okay, so I feel like that shade could apply a little bit more vibrantly if I wet the brush, so I'm going to do that. Ah, there we go. She's showing up to work. Okay, I see you, I see you. Oh, she's gorgeous. I'm talking about the eyeshadow, not me. <laughs> For the sake of using as many of the colors in this palette as possible, I'm going to wet my brush again and go into the shade Buried Treasure and just apply that to the outer part of the cut crease. Just to transition that shade uh, gem into Mystic, I'm going to use Buried Treasure as a bit of a gradient bridge. This one's really pretty. It's got little flecks of gold in it. That's really pretty. I wish I had more lid space. <laughs> I 
Now, just because I want a little bit more brightness in the inner corners of my eyes, I'm going to wet my brush again and take Bling Bling and apply that right in the inner corner here. You probably won't even be able to see that when I have my eyes open, but... <laughs> okay, so that's it for the top part of my eyes. I'm going to clean up the edges here, finish off the rest of my face off camera. Then I'll be back, finish off the eyes, and show you guys the finished look and my final thoughts. Okay, so I have the rest of my face on, and thank goodness for that, because you know, your girl needed it. <laughs> So now I'm going to finish off under the eyes. I'm going to go in with a little bit of a black eyeliner in the waterline. Just on the outer part there. I'm going to stop halfway in with the black eyeliner just so that it doesn't close off my eyes in the corners. And I'm going to keep that nice and bright and I'll probably add a little bit more of a shimmer on the inner corners before I'm done. So I'm going to go in with a small blending brush. This one is the Morphe E36. And I'm going to go in with pretty much the same shades that I put on the top half, but in reverse. So I'm going to go in with first Mystic, then Rockstar, then Hush Hush, and blend all of that out under the waterline. Then I'm going to go in with a slightly larger blending brush and go into Hush Hush and really blow that out under the waterline. So I want a little bit more brightness on the inner corners of my eyes. So I'm going to take another small brush, uh, give it a little bit of a spritz, and then go into Glitz and Glam, which is this shade here and apply that to the inner corners of my eyes. I don't know if that's not showing up just because of my skin tone or because I didn't wet the brush enough or maybe it's just too close to my skin tone to be showing up. Can you see that? Probably not. Okay, so it's showing up a little bit. It's probably more not showing up because my skin is a little bit darker. So I'm going to go into Bling Bling instead and apply that right on top of Glitz and Glam. Oh, that's better. That one you can see. Can you see that? So pretty. Okay, so I believe this look calls for a dramatic eyeliner and some heavy mascara. I'm not going to do falsies just because uh, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to apply some eyeliner and mascara and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just went in with some mascara and some dramatic eyeliner because I feel like this look really calls for it. I'm really loving how this look turned out. So I'm going to quickly do some swatches just of this palette, the Bling Boss for you because this is the one that I used today. But I will be doing more future videos using the other palettes and doing some eyeshadow looks for you guys. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. But for now, I'm just going to do some swatches of Bling Boss for you. This is Bling Bling, Hush Hush, Gem. This one is Pizzazz, Mystic. This is the bottom row, so we've got Sparks, Glitz and Glam, Rockstar, and ballsy and lastly we have berry treasure so those are the swatches of bling boss i absolutely love these shades pizzazz i didn't end up using on the eyes but i'm really looking forward to making that into another eye look because i love those deep burgundy shades so that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed this makeup tutorial if you did please give it a thumbs up Comment down below if you got this vault collection, which palette was your favorite, which one did you like, which one have you done eyeshadow looks with. Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Let's have a conversation about this vault collection. Let's have some conversation about some love and spreading positivity to each other. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. I quickly left that splay splace. Well, that's not happening with the. Who said who? No. 
who said what and who come 